this week in real pirate ball. Documenting the 2010 Pittsburgh Pirates baseball season. And here's your host, Greg Mercer. What's up everybody? It's Mercer here with week number 18 of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. This was a wild week full of news, so wild that I've kind of lost my voice. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. I haven't done game recaps at the start of Twerp for a while, but this week's top story has to be the game on Saturday night versus the Rockies. I attended this game as a part of a yearly meeting with a bunch of guys from a Pirates message board called Change in Atmosphere. Every time I go to a Pirates game, it seems like something crazy happens. This is no exception, and as always, I try to get good footage. The Pirates were down one to nothing until the sixth inning when Chris Snyder hit the go-ahead home run. The Pirates got out to a 5-2 lead in the ninth, but Joel Hanrahan gave up a tying home run to Ian Stewart. Todd Hilton hit a two-run home run in the tenth to make it seven to five, and things looked bleak. After a hit by Andrew McCutcheon and a great walk drawn by Garrett Jones, Pedro Alvarez came to the plate with two outs and the game in his hands. Listen and watch my live recording as the events transpired. 7-5, two outs, and it's Pedro time, with two men on base. And I have this extremely crazy sensation that he's going to hit home. Thursday's game was the Pirates' debut of recently acquired pitcher James McDonald. Much like Charlie Morton, McDonald has always looked to have great potential but lacked that mental edge needed to take his game to the next level. McDonald fired six shutout innings against the Rockies and recorded eight strikeouts. His stuff looked nasty at times. His mid-90s fastball looked much faster than that. His curveball was dropping in for strikes and made several batters bail out from movement and he threw some great changeups to fool a few batters as well. With stuff like this, McDonald could end up being the best pitcher on the Pirates system if he keeps his head on straight. I don't want to read into things, but when I saw McDonald in interviews, it looked as though he was looking away and seemed very quiet. That type of body language suggests he might be a little introverted and might be a reason why he's had some problems with confidence in the past. Hopefully he'll learn to trust himself and his stuff in order to maximize his potential. On Sunday morning, news broke that the Pirates had fired pitching coach Joe Kerrigan and bench coach Gary Varsho. They were replaced by Ray Searage and Jeff Bannister. Kerrigan was supposed to be the savior of the pitching staff, but in his nearly two-year tenure, the Pirates were perennially one of the worst staffs in the league. Well, I was fine until Dave Kerwin started yelling at me. I, I, I can take a lot, but I can get yelled at. And Dave Kerwin started yelling at me, or I guess his name, Dave Kerwin. Joe Kerrigan. Joe Kerrigan. Dave Kerwin. <laughs> Gary Varsha was apparently involved in some off-the-field arguments with players and manager John Russell, which probably led to his demise. They dedicate their lives to running all of hills. He tries to please them all. This bitter man he yells. In my opinion, this is the Pirates' compulsory accountability firing in which they try to appease the fan base for a poor season. Doing this right after Pedro's game-winning homer fires up the fan base and gives them a reason to assume change is coming. Sure, I thought that Kerrigan was terrible and needed axed, but unless Varsho was doing something completely insubordinate, I just don't see how his job was more in danger than someone like Tony Beasley. This week, the Pirates picked up two more bullpen arms off of waivers. The first was Chris Resop, formerly of the Atlanta Braves. Resop was a Garrett Jones-like casualty of a good farm system. Neil Huntington felt his mid-90s fastball made him at least a good power reliever candidate, and he also could be tried out as starter going into next year. The other acquisition was for veteran pitcher Chan Ho Park. Here was Park's reaction after learning of his waving. I had a lot of diarrhea. Park's a washed-up starter that's on the team only because the Pirates don't have any other capable young arms to try. But hey, if the Pirates get into a bench-clearing brawl, I think they'd be in good shape from now on. <laughs> 
early in the week, we found out that Rinku and Dinesh, the two Indian pitchers that were acquired by the Pirates last year, were approached by Hollywood legend Sylvester Stallone about making a movie about their story. Do I look like a freaking Indian? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe these guys will become the next slumdog millionaires and forget all about baseball altogether. Well, if nothing else, I'm sure they can find work somewhere. <laughs> The Pirates lost two out of three games to the Reds in the first series of the week. On Monday, the Pirates were shut out four to nothing. It's the fourth time they were shut out by the Reds in 2010. This time by Travis Wood. He said Wood. <laughs> On Tuesday, the Pirates barely escaped with a 7-6 win over young Reds pitcher Mike Leake. Let's go! Leake! 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 Wednesday's afternoon game was another terrible effort by the Pirates in a 9-4 loss. The lone bright spots were Jeff Clement and Pedro Alvarez's home runs. In the last two games of the series, the bullpen allowed nine runs combined in the sixth and seventh innings. This is exactly what I predicted would happen at the end of last week's edition of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. Whoa, I think I just figured something out, Beavis. <laughs> what? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah, me. You really fucked. <laughs> I've already told you about the two wins in this series with the Rockies, and I'm sure you really don't want to hear about the losses. Besides, I really don't have time to talk about them anyway. On Friday, the Pirates lost 6-3. I wasn't able to watch the game, but my friends were there. They must have texted me about 10 times mentioning every single terrible play the Pirates made. Sunday's game was over before it started as the Pirates lost 8-4. Paul Mahone was unable to carry any momentum from the previous night's heroics as he gave up eight runs, six of which were earned in two and two-thirds innings. Now it's time for my Bet Against the Pirates update for week 18. In my book, any time I can make money during a homestand is a win, even if it's only a couple of bucks. The Pirates went three and four this week, and I went four and three on my bets. I won a $20 run line bet on Wednesday, but every other bet was on the money line. I managed to squeak out $6.36 this week, which brought my current total overall profit to $160.34. With 51 games to go, I'm finding it more and more hard to bet on the run line. I'm betting a lot of money lines to avoid getting burned. I'm only taking chances when I feel the bet is a slam dunk. On a side note, I'm not going to lie, this betting has further desensitized me from enjoying any Pirates wins. Pedro's home run was awesome last night, but in the back of my mind, I was still mad that I lost $20. I'm eagerly awaiting the end of the season so I can stop worrying about betting and getting back to enjoying the games. What do I think about the Pirates this week? Once again, we're continuing to see great strides from many of the Pirates' young offensive players. Hopefully guys like James McDonald and Chris Resop will help the Pirates' pitching staff become more competitive as the season winds down. As we get closer to the deadline for signing draft picks, Neil Huntington's actions will come under heavy scrutiny as the fans hope to see even more talented young arms added to the system. The Pirates are back on the road again next week for six games, three against the San Diego Padres and three against the Houston Astros. Well, that about does it for this week. Make sure you check back again next week for another edition of This Week in Real Pirate. I'm Greg Mercer. Later.